Hello and welcome to Geeky Remy here at MCM Birmingham. Welcome. So I've captured a rogue silk spectre while we're here. Hi George. Hello. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. So, MCM Comic Con, if people haven't been here before, what do they experience? Uh, a lot of standing in queues, um, but aside from that, the, the Comics Village is amazing. There's a lot of local creators here in the Comics Village, which is always nice to see. Local always cosplay. amazing. Steve yeah. Tanner from Steve's Time Comics. Sarah Grayling, who, as we have already established on the show, I am a huge fan girl for, so yes. it's nice to see her. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of cosplay, a lot of incredible cosplay. We've uh, been, I believe, sending Callum out to take lots of lovely photos from the Wicked's cosplay, so we'll see those later. And Dave's um, dropping in as well. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And a lot of famous people, which is nice. Yes, so we're having a chat with Denise Crosby a little bit later on. And there's loads of other stuff here, so there's thousands of stalls. More, fun, more Funko Pops that you could probably be buried under, the volume of it. Um, you spend your pocket money on. Yes, spend all of your pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's gaming studios here. We've got Game with a Massive Stand. Arrow Films are here. Um, Warwick Davis is here. Davis is here, yes. and Anthony Daniels. Yes, so we've got some Star Wars legends here as we speak. We're still here at MCM Birmingham Comic Con. We are here with Gordon, Gordon. Stuff. Gordon. Yeah. Uh, and this incredible, incredible Iron Man shield cr crossover. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a mashup. It's, um, it's a stealth suit from like the, yes. the Iron Man two suit, painted black and silver. And yes. I've been what? building for about five or six years. And yeah, um, yeah the last time I came up was about four years ago yes. uh, in a red. Yeah. Um, so what do you actually uh, use to to create it? So it's fiberglass. Um, we used um, Fomex to start off with, car body filler, more fiberglass, and then make casts to it. Um, yeah. We've got LEDs for the hands, LEDs for the eyes, EL on the front, um, and then a lot of metal and bolts yeah. and hinges and yeah. all sorts to make it work. Um, and that's it. Thank you. How long did it take a build like that in total? This, this one from out the moulds, this was about six weeks. That's quite quick turnaround. Yeah, I was, so I I was on it. I was on it. That's why I painted it black, because yeah. it takes a lot longer to do a red paint job, because you have to get the Yeah, multiple layers, yeah. yeah make it so this is a bit of a bit of a quick one, but uh, yeah, about six weeks. Oh, generally, yeah. generally two months. Yeah, I was going to say, for, yeah. for, a, for a quick job, it's, yeah. uh, it's come out pretty well. Yeah. It's great to be here. Uh, I don't think I've been here before. I think this is my first time here, if I'm not, you know, everything, it, it just begins to blend, you know, but um, um, it's, it's a delight to be here. People have sort of grown up watching Star Trek and it's been such a big part of their life. So I think um, the fans really just want to sort of share that with you, you know, get, have a chance to be able to express that. Um, and uh, I, we, we are, we're all very, truly grateful. Is it interesting to still be able to reprise the character, so with the Star Trek Online universe, where you've gone back and forward some of the voice casting for that? Is it interesting to, when you get the call, to say, would you like to come back? Oh, this was, this was great. You know, it was really interesting because the part of Sila, 
I think um, was was um, much much more flushed out in the online game. You know, they they do such a terrific job, and um, it was it was really a delight to be able to do that to 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 play Sila and Tasha. You know, and I think I did it in one day. You know, so I was like, you know, Tasha, Sila, Tasha, Sila. You know, it's just really in, a challenge for an actor to do that. Yeah, because it must be interesting because there's not many people in the Star Trek family who've had a chance to play two characters to such an aplomb as yourself. Uh, um, so was it different to like get from Sela to Tasha and back and forth? Yeah, I mean, when I was filming, it was a little bit of an easier transition because, um, you know, I pretty much approached it as just a brand new character altogether, you know, the part of Sela. And, um, but when doing the voice for the game, it wasn't that much um, space, you know, had gone yeah. in, in, in uh, difference. So it was it was a little bit trickier to just alter the voice in a way that could um, suggest, you know, that I was, you know, now Tasha, and then, you know, a little bit, a little bit more of a challenge. You know, people really have a very um, soft spot for the next gen. You know, of all the series, they they just it it I think a lot of it has to do with the chemistry of the cast and and you know it was 25 years had gone by before you know anything new had been made so um, and I think it's I think it I think it's really a delight um, it does hold up a lot of it the first season's a little dicey you know um, but but yeah there's the, I think the show has earned its place. How important do you think your character was as a stepping stone to get into characters like Major Kira and Janeway? Do you think we would have had characters like that in the Star Trek universe if mm. we hadn't had uh, yours initially? Um, I think that Star Trek, you know, was al is always a reflection of its, its time. And I think that, you know, having a female security chief um, was, was, exactly in keeping with the times um, and I yeah it, it, it's definitely a progression you know here we are with discovery having you know female leaders and you don't even really sort of scratch your head I I think though it's you know it we still have a long ways to go so you know clearly what what we're seeing reflected in our newspapers every day what's going on so you know it's it's we're getting there, baby steps, but yeah, definitely I think Tasha was was um, um, a stepping stone, for sure. Swapping franchise for a second, how was your time on The Walking Dead? It, well, it was uh, such, um, I, I, to be honest, I, had, I wasn't watching The Walk, Walking Dead, I had no idea how popular and and you know this this show had become they were so lovely to work with and welcoming and embracing and I think that truly begins with Andrew Lincoln being who he is he's just a you know just a lovely human being um, they do a great job they're they're they know what they're doing they know how to make you know turn this out like cinematically within days and everybody's very professional so um, I was I was kept really um, the, under wrap. The the show is is very guarded, very secretive. Um, I had absolutely no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, <laughs> they didn't even tell me what really what I was doing until like the day of. Wow. Um, I knew I was wearing a wig, and I that's pretty much all I knew. And um, it was a really interesting experience in that way. That uh, you're kind of you're kind of just shooting on the fly, you know? It must be such a completely different experience to something as scripted as Star Trek Next Generation going into it. Right, and yeah, and it was just, um, you know, they, they, they shoot in, um, uh, they shoot very, very precisely and well in Atlanta. It was just, yeah, it was just great to be part of, again, this, this phenomenon. Uh, so would you look at returning to the franchise in a different role then, obviously having played two different characters already in the Star Trek universe? Oh, I think it'd be really great fun, and, you know, I think the fans would love it, and, and you know, um, I hope, yeah, I hope to do it, absolutely.
Thank you for joining us at MCM Birmingham for our latest YouTube video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Tell your friends about the things that we do. Uh, don't forget to listen from radio where you can find us every Saturday at noon. Don't forget you can find us online on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you can find us. Uh, give a shout and if you want to come and chat, say hello at geekybrewery.com. Bye everybody. <laughs>